begin. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Things That Matter with Marty McNabb. I am delighted today to try something new out with uh, multiple guests, which I've never done before. It is kind of going to be like my regular live virtual show and tales that I do. So I think I, I, I think I got this down. I think I can do it. But a little background about me. Uh, I am a personal historian and legacy artist who has been delighted and honored to create visual narratives from my client's photo, document, and memorabilia archives. Basically, in other words, I tell stories with other people's stuff, mm. right? So that is why I'm drawn to the stories that get attached to things. Now, needless to say, I think all of us here today would agree that things really don't matter. It's the stories that get attached to these things that matter. And so today, my guests are going to share an object that is connected to somebody who passed away, has something to do with grief, with the losing of people, and how they keep the memory of those people alive in their life. So needless to say, that is why I chose the theme past <laughs> and present. So people who passed away, the things they leave, keep a little bit of them with it and keep us connected to them. So today I'm delighted. The reason why we're doing this a little different than usual is because these wonderful humans are going to be hosting a very special event in February. We'll talk a little bit more about specifically about that at the end of the program. But this is all a, a event, a day long event to help people deal with grief in their life. So they will tell more about that at the end. But right now we are doing typical show and tell. So, and I am going to invite our first show and teller while the rest of us look and listen or just listen if it's just a, on podcast to our, the first guest, Craig Addy. Thanks, Take it Marty. away. Yeah, so, so my object is this sculpture. It's a bronze sculpture and um, it's made by my brother. And my brother, Brian, passed away in 2016, very suddenly and unexpectedly. He wasn't even 60 yet. And um, this sculpture is so important to me, not just because it reminds me of him, but it, this sculpture let me recreate the story of my brother. When my brother died, there was a lot of talk in the extended family that, you know, he was a person who had a lot of problems his life never really came to what it could have been. You know, he had issues with drugs and all kinds of things. And for whatever reason, I chose to take pictures of all of his artwork, all of his sculptures and his paintings and his drawings. And when I created all that artwork and put it into a book, I got the incredible gift and accomplishments that he had made in the world. And so it literally shifted who my brother was for me. So that's my story. Oh, Craig, thank you so much. I learned more about you and your brother through the thing you keep. Thank you so much. And with that, I think Karen is going to be our next story sharer. Take it away. Thank, thank you, Marty. Thank you, Craig. Um, this teeny tiny item, I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to share my screen. Um, this is, let me get this up for you. Here you go. This is my grandmother's ring. This is my father's mother. This woman, um, 
She really helped mold and shape who I am. She continues to be a major influence. I, I on you know play with it. I fiddle with it. I I touch it for uh, I get a sense of just belonging, a sense of uh, like incredible love, unconditional love. And if you look closely at the very bottom picture, her name is engraved and the date of her wedding uh, to my grandfather. And I got this ring after my aunt, her daughter passed away. So it's kind of become this generational keepsake. And I'm just so honored to be the current owner. And I look forward to, you know, who gets it next and to continue to tell the stories of my grandmother and this just incredible woman that she was. And that's my item. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Karen. Ah, uh, that is amazing. That is an amazing keepsake. And thanks for caring for it and thinking about where it's going to go um, in the in the future, because that's part of my work as well, is legacy, right? Connection, community, and legacy. So thank you for describing that so beautifully. So, all right. And so I think our fabulous Peaches is going to be our next show and Taylor. Thank you, Marty. Thank you for having us all on. This is very exciting. Before I show my object, I, I'd like to give a little background. My grandparents, Boris and Ida, or Beryl and Haya, came over from Eastern Europe in the 1920s to escape the pogroms in Russia. Jew Jewish villages were being attacked and burned and people were being killed. And they ran for their lives across Europe to gain passage to the US. When they got here, they started selling caramels on the street to make money. They cooked up condensed, sweetened condensed milk and made little caramels. And then my grandfather from there opened a fruit store and then a grocery store and then another grocery store and then a women's clothing store and then another women's clothing store. And my grandmother became a revolutionary writer for Jewish and Russian newspapers in this country. One of the things they brought with them across Europe and to us was a samovar, oops, virtual background. How can I, oh, can you there. see it? Yes. Okay. So this samovar, oops, how's that better? Better. I'll nope. try to show the top. Oh, well, I don't have any much luck here. What if I put it in front of me? Does that help? There we go. It's in yes. front of me. Okay. So this is a, a water heater to make tea. And the little coals go inside a cylinder through the samovar and there's a spigot, the water heats up inside of it. And then you put your teapot on top after you make tea. So it keeps it hot. So I'm gonna move this out of my face. So you can imagine them coming from across the world carrying this teapot with them, what was important to them about their culture and about their life back home. So I'm very moved because when they came here, they lost many, many relatives in Eastern Europe. They never saw them again. And they settled here as Americans and they made this country what it is. And keeping this some of our around keeps them with me, keeps the legacy of our culture with me. It reminds me every day of my grandmother and my grandfather. That's my object. Oh my God, Peaches, that is so beautiful. What a beautiful piece of history. Um, you you keep there and isn't it interesting like you said like what you learned about what was important to them because that's not an easy thing to travel with so but it it meant connection community not breaking bread but sharing tea you know similar things you know family it's beautiful thank you so much all mm -hmm. right and i think noah is up is our next show and teller. And I'm looking forward to really, uh, you know, about yours because I've gotten a chance to meet everyone else, um, but I have not had a chance to meet you. And so I'm looking forward to getting to know you better through the thing that you brought. So take it away, Noah. Thank you so much, Marty. And thank you for this incredibly innovative way of doing podcasting. I imagine myself and my father 
uh, back in 1994, running, running, running down the Continental Divide Trail in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, in the middle of a monsoon storm in late August, which happens in the that area of the country. And we ran down into a town that has a little hot springs in a Buddhist bookstore called the Tara Mandala Bookstore, which has now become a world renowned retreat center that was just starting when we got there. And we met a woman named Sultram Alioni, who's uh, a Lama, she's the first American woman to become a Tibetan Lama. And we got this very special Buddhist prayer beads, which is known as a mala. It has 109 beads where you pray and give thanks. And my father gave this to me as a way of passing on the Tibetan Buddhist uh, traditions and practices that he had uh, converted to out of being in seminary. He was raised Methodist and became very devoted Buddhist minister. And so when he handed his Buddhist legacy to me in these beads, I keep them with me every day since he passed away five years ago. And they keep me connected to him, my love for him, his legacy, everything he's taught me, and the thousands of years of teachings in the Buddhist tradition. So these are very, very important to me. It's my most sacred object, and I wear them proudly with love as I go about my life and do my teaching here. And I'm so thankful to be able to share them with you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Oh, Noah, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I I can tell just how your light, your face lit up when you were talking about your dad and just the, the deep love and connection. So thank you so much for sharing that. And um, let's- Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think Joanne is our next story sharer. So I will. Let's see. Joanne. Hello. Thank you. This is such a, I love listening to all the stories. Um, so my father's grandmother died January 2011. And I went to the town, the Northeast Ohio small town that they live in for her funeral to gather and I wanted to say it's really cold up there in January and I am currently now living in Savannah Georgia where it's really nice and warm in the winter so going up there for the funeral was um, sad but it's also really cold and so but the funeral is nice and I am um, my grandmother and I had a nice relationship I remember her as a nice woman she's given me lots of um some fun toys that I still have today. But she wasn't the kind of grandmother that we would see all the time. We would travel once or twice a year to visit grandmas. And I remember certain things about her, like ginger ale and the game Kings Around the Corner. Um, and then later years, as I went back to the to visit her when without my parents, I had some really nice conversations with her. But I never really had that old grandma that would just hug me and feel all nice and warm. So when I was at the funeral and afterwards, I was at my at her house and my dad's like, well, do you want anything? And I was like, hmm, Rita, what do I want? And I found this amazing sweater. It is so warm. And it's so warm that here in Savannah winters, it's my winter coat. And I feel what I love about this and why I wanted to share it was this is how my grandmother is keeping me warm now. So she might not have given me the the little hugs when I was a little girl, but she's giving them to me now. And the last thing I just want to share is my mother had put her name. It's, it's kind of dirty. I haven't need to wash it. But anyway, my mother uh, put her name. So I also have my mom with it. So that this sweater is, and people compliment it all the time. So I love my sweater. I love my grandma. Oh, wow. <clears throat> that is amazing, Joanne. So amazing. I love the fact that like we, the whole point of show and tales is that anything and everything has a story. So we can have these, these pieces like Karen's piece and Peach's piece that are such family heirlooms and quote unquote have more value and everything. But realistically, it's the stories, the hugs that you're still getting, that you're getting from your grandmother that are equally as important as 
as it all. So I love that. Thank you so much. Um, and Kristen, I am, you are wrapping us up to an extent on the show and tell portion of the, the, the interview. So you can take it away. Thank you, Marty. I'm really honored to be here and to hear all of your stories. It's really inspiring and moving. Um, so I have a, this is a little greeting card and it says sending you a smile to help pick up your day. And this is from my grandmother. Um, <laughs> and I can't help but smile when I talk about her and I think about her. She um, is the epitome of unconditional love. She passed away in um, 2003. I got this card from her in 2001, right after September 11, because she was worried about me. Um, I was actually in New York on the date of September 11, 2001. Um, so she just wanted me to know that she was always thinking about me. Um, but I really knew that um, because for, for all of my life, she's always been my greatest champion. Her living room of her house was my first stage. And I believe it was a major contribution to how I grew up to become a professional dancer. Um, that, that environment of unconditional love and the message, I believe in you, you can do anything and shine your light has carried me through my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and I keep this on my desk in the corner where I look at it multiple times a day now because I know she's with me and she's always, always been my greatest support. And every time I want to smile, I just think of her. So I'm honored to share this and to share her memory. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Kristen. That I, needless to say, I was lucky enough to have you on my uh, show and tell 9 11 edition, and you shared that. And it's just so, so beautiful. And as people who travel a lot, and move a lot, it's really important to, the, to know that we can carry little pieces of people like, you know, and uh, still keep their memory alive. So that was a perfect way to, uh, you know, wrap us up of the show and tell portion of past and present, how we keep the memory alive. So uh, without further ado, I am going to invite uh, Karen to um, share a bit more about what you would be in store for if you set aside the time to join them at their grief retreat in February. And um, because all of these wonderful people are going to be leading um, you through a process to uh, heal and to celebrate the memory of a loved one lost. So please, with that, Karen, I will turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Marty. And like, really, thank you, everybody here. I, I feel I've known you for a while and in now I just feel like I know even more and I can really see your hearts. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so the name of this event that we're having on February 12th 2023 is Easing Hearts, a self-expression retreat for the grieving. And these individuals that you see before you will actually be leading four different workshops. They, these are creative and healing experiences designed for you to process grief and to experience the space of love and loss together. Um, we will be doing this through art, movement, writing, and gratitude. And we're going to end the day with an amazing piano um, composition that will actually be designed as your own self-expression of grief. And it will be available to you at the end of the day um, to have as a momentum of, of this day. Um, so I want to introduce... Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, mostly because his last name begins with an A and he comes alphabetically, is Craig Addy. He has been yeah. an integral partner to me in creating this event 
um, our workshop, I will lead a conversation with the participants and Craig will take their experience and actually transform it into a piano um, song, a piano rendition um, that really just captures your experience. And it's it's our belief that the music actually can reach a little further, a little deeper into your heart than the words. So Craig, that's Craig Addy. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Kristen Mangione will be leading a workshop where um, her guided meditation and movement will take you through a space of healing and gently reassemble through this movement, the broken fragments within your body um, that are a result of the grief and where you hold the grief. And she will actually transform those pieces into healing and unconditional love. It's actually quite remarkable. And I'm so honored to have her as part of our, our day. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, Noah McIntyre, the Discover Gratitude Coach, he will lead a workshop where you will be able to create the courage to be with yourself and to be uh, able to discover new ways to care for yourself and to kind of transform the way that you can be towards the people that you have lost and love. Um, that is Noah McIntyre and so honored also to have you with us to, uh, for the event. So thank you, Noah. The next person I'd like to introduce is Joanne Morton, the positive energy artist. Um, Joanne will run a workshop where you will create a hanging mobile. And on this mobile will be five circles. And these circles will represent the gratitude and joy that you've experienced with your loved one. She will use words and images. And these um, circles in this mobile will be a gentle reminder to really support you through the grieving process. And that is Joanne Morton. Thank you, Joanne. So excited for you, to have you with us. And finally is Peaches Udoma. Peaches is gonna lead a workshop where she will use traditional haiku to describe your loved one. And in haiku, it's really the traditional haiku, it's really concerned with nature and the seasons. So this will allow you to celebrate, grieve and heal through this like really ancient poetic form. She will help you to create and even contemplate how you can locate your loved ones uh, out in nature and be surrounded by that love. And that is Peaches Udoma. And again, just so honored to have you as part of this workshop. So thank you. And Marty, that, that's the team. And these are the folks that will, you know, really take care of your heart. Wonderful. So wonderful. So what a gift what an ongoing gift that you will walk away with uh, a tr being transformed and recognizing that you uh, uh, have a powerful uh, ability to transform grief uh, and find help from this wonderful team here uh, for easing hearts. And you will walk away with movement and and uh, a mobile and music and a haiku. I mean, you will walk away with such an amazing gift after this event. So during the gift, during the retreat is a gift. And then you will walk away with such wonderful, wonderful things to carry with you on your grief journey. So I thank you everyone so much. I think that this was pretty, I, I think if somebody asked me to do this again with a whole group, I think we can, I could pull it off again. So thank you for pushing me past my comfort zone, but that's what you're all about anyway. <laughs> so I thank you mm -hmm. so much for this. And I encourage the listeners, I will be putting 
the information to contact each of these wonderful people, these beautiful people. I will put that information in the show notes. And of course, I will put all the information about Easing Hearts, um, the retreat in the show notes as well. So, um, uh, so, and let's see. Okay. So, yes. So, um, we will be sharing. Joanne, you had, we'll be putting that in the show notes, all the information about the event. So, in the show notes. What's the date again? Did we say the date? Yes, we did. But you might as well say it again. So, Craig, would you like to wrap it up with the date and time and how they can, and I will be putting the ticket link in the show notes, but. Yes. So easing hearts will be on February 12th. That's a Sunday and it'll go from 11 AM to 4 PM Eastern time. Wonderful. Delightful. I am so excited about it. This was so much fun. Like I said, it's like show and tell my virtual events. So it shouldn't have been any different, but it did kind of make me like, what? Um, <laughs> but I, it went beautifully and thank you so much. And like I said, I got a chance to, to learn much more about you um, through this, this journey of, of the simple yet powerful experience of sharing the stories of the things that matter. So please, for those listening, uh, check out this event that's coming up check out more podcasts and YouTube shows of things that matter. I think I'm up to episode seven, um, but uh, anyway, and we're gonna figure out when this is going to go out uh, live so that it can build up to this wonderful event. And I welcome you to come to an um, event I'm doing uh, end of January. I do virtual show and tales every month. If you want to hire me uh, to host family reunions or other uh, employee uh, recognitions or donor appreciations or conference to kick off a conference so people can create uh, these instant connection points throughout the conference, please uh, reach out to me. I will put that also in the show notes. And if you're looking for a unique way to market your business that feels good and does good, reach out to me about the Show and Tales story sharing host membership community. I would be delighted to have you join me. So thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs>